This is lecture set 29. Um, we are beginning our discussion of how we use our resources in terms of how much we use and where we get those resources from. This lecture deals with wastewater and wastewater treatment. So for this lecture, we are looking at standard 5B.5 that deals with how human populations have to build and maintain systems to remove and treat their waste. So our goals for this lecture is, um, are as follows. Be able to describe different types of wastewater, explain the process of wastewater treatment, including the steps of primary and secondary wastewater treatment and being able to identify and explain the laws that are in place to regulate waste materials, specifically waste water. So first you have to define wastewater. Um, and wastewater is one of the biggest issues that we face across the world um, in terms of having contaminated water. Um, this water is either contaminated in some form from um, commercial use, such as an uh, industry, a commercial farm, um, or just simply coming from residential areas in our homes. Um, wastewater is going to go to a treatment plant. Um, so when most of us think about wastewater, we immediately think of the really stinky wastewater plant that's in, out in the middle of nowhere. Um, actually, when we talk about wastewater, we have to define it in one of three different categories. So those categories of wastewater are white water, gray water, and black water. And they are defined by the kinds of substances that they come into contact with during their use. So here are our three different types. White water is also known as potable water. Um, this is water that has not come into contact with anything that could harm a human being if that water was consumed. So, for example, the water that comes straight out of your tap at home, that is white water. It meets all of the state and federal guidelines for um, constituent components, um, or it should meet all of those guidelines. The second is gray water. This is water that is reusable. Um, gray water is water that has come in contact with uh, skin, hair, grease or food residue, or some kind of soaps or detergents. Gray water comes from your sinks, your showers, your dishwasher, your washing machine. With very little kind of treatment that you can do at home, you can reuse gray water uh, for use in your outdoor planters. Um, or in gardens. So this kind of water can be used instead of having to get brand new water that instead you could be drinking, you're reusing this water in, in the place of water that you could be drinking. The last is black water and this is sewage. So black water is anything that has come in contact with human waste. Um, so this is going to come from your toilets and it must be put through an extensive filtration process in order to release it back into the ecosystem. So when we talk about wastewater, we have to talk first about how do we collect it? Where does it come from? Um, and when we talk about collecting wastewater, we really have to define it in terms of urban areas and rural areas. In an urban area, you're going to have either a dedicated sewer line, uh, which is sewer lines that separate stormwater runoff, so from a rainstorm or snow melt, and wastewater that's coming from homes and businesses. You may also have a combined sewer system, and that's where stormwater and wastewater are collected in the same place and they're transferred through the same system. So those are your urban areas. So in an urban area, you're gonna see these two here. You're gonna see a dedicated line or you're going to see a combined line. In a rural area, you're going to more likely have septic tanks. And septic tanks uh, collect water in a very specialized tank um, that's there under the house that has to be emptied out. Um, so this is a septic tank that shows you how it works. 
Um, so all of the drainage comes out of the house and it ends up in this septic tank um, that has uh, layers of bacteria and other microorganisms that break down anything that is organic that's in the system. Uh, so it breaks that down and it will eventually end up in one of three places. It will be in the scum that's on the top, it will be in the wastewater that's in the middle, or it will be in the sludge that's at the bottom. Um, the wastewater will eventually be pulled out and taken to a drain field where it's filtered out naturally um, through soil. Uh, there's also a manhole cover in a septic tank that has to, that's a, there for someone to come and pump the septic tank. That is to remove buildup of sludge in order to prevent backup into the house. When we talk about urban areas, we're going to talk about that big wastewater treatment plant. There are two basic steps of wastewater treatment. So wastewater treatment is primarily physically, is a physical and chemical process, uh, physical, chemical, bio, biological. Um, so in order to remove large debris and the basics of organic material, you start with primary treatment. Removing dissolved substances and oxygen demanding waste is secondary treatment. Um, we'll talk about the later steps uh, in just a moment. So here is a typical diagram of what a wastewater treatment plant looks like. And as you see, it's a gift, so it moves. So when we talk about primary treatment, that's the first three steps. Uh, so in primary treatment, the first thing you have is you have the bar screen. So you see your bar screen right here. What happens is that liquid flows through the pipes when it hits the bar screen. Anything that's too big to make it past the bar screen, it just settles out the bottom here in your coarse debris. The fluid will go in to the next stage, which is the sand and grit removal. What happens there is the water or the tank, either one is agitated to allow larger materials that made it through the screen but still don't need to go any further, lets those kind of settle out at the bottom. This typically tends to be sand, grit, dirt, other soil-like particles. Then it ends up in the primary clarification tank. This is simply where the water is allowed to settle and any solids fall down into what's called the sludge digester. This is the primary process. Primary wastewater treatment is a mechanical process. We're mechanically removing large materials. We're mechanically agitating the water in order to get things to settle out. When we move into secondary treatment, we are talking biological and chemical processes. So the first step of secondary treatment is the aeration tank. In the aeration tank, uh, oxygen is pumped into the tank to allow bacteria to break down oxygen demanding wastes in that tank. So that Im influx of oxygen encourages digestion um, and then allows that to be removed, allows those component parts to be removed. Those parts are removed in the secondary clarification tank. So in the secondary clarification tank, that sludge settles out and it goes into some pipes. Sometimes that sludge is cycled back into the system in order to encourage more breakdown in the aeration tank. And that is called activated sludge. Um, in terms of wastewater treatment, sludge is anything that is solid that needs to be uh, taken away. The last step of typical wastewater treatment is the disinfection tank. And in the disinfection tank, the liquid is either treated with chlorine wash or with ultraviolet light to kill any remaining uh, microorganisms. Once it goes through the disinfection tank, it is released as effluent. All of the solid stuff is now in the sludge digestion tank where it is compacted, broken down, and it is taken out to be dried and burned or used uh, as fertilizer. Uh, there is also this thing of tertiary wastewater treatment. That is very rarely used. <clears throat> tertiary wastewater treatment is designed specifically to remove individual wastes that have made it through 
the primary secondary process. So there may be some dissolved substances, medications, nitrogens, phosphorus, uh, something that needs to be removed that those first two stages didn't really get out. Tertiary wastewater treatment is incredibly expensive um, and therefore very few places actually use it. All right, so there are some problems with improper wastewater treatment. Um, the big thing is that the traditional wastewater process only removes about 97% of suspended solids and oxygen demanding wastes. Uh, the majority of toxic metals, synthetic organic chemicals, phosphorus and nitrogen, they get removed, but some of it keeps going. So you still have about 30% of the toxic metals and 30% of the phosphorus and half of the nitrogen that was in the water is still there when it leaves the wastewater treatment plant. Um, you also have these persistent and toxic substances that are still in the effluent and the medications as well. And medications that are in wastewater pose a big threat to the ecosystems as well as to the people who are going to be using that water later. Additionally, you sometimes have people who just don't do wastewater properly. Um, about 500 cities in the United States have been cited for failing federal uh, standards for their sewage treatment plants, so they're they have inadequate treatment systems. Um, and there are 34 East Coast cities that are known to just screen out their solids. They basically do primary and then they dump the water in uh, nearby bodies of water, um, particularly the ocean. So you talked about what happens when it goes wrong. Here is what determines how it goes right. There are three basic laws that are used to regulate wastewater treatment in the United States. Um, the first one is the Clean Water Act, which deals with regulating point source pollution, specifically from municipal sewage. Um, and it defines what clean water is in the United States. So it defines what can be in that water when it is released as effluent from, uh, from the system. The second thing is the Water Quality Act, which is an amendment to the Clean Water Act um, that was specifically written to encourage the use of dedicated sewer systems. Um, if you remember, dedicated sewer systems are the ones that split up storm water is collected in one area and then municipal sewage is collected in a different area. Lastly, you have the Safe Drinking Water Act. This act sets standards for the maximum containment levels of water pollutants that can affect human health. So it determines what can be in the water in terms of that wastewater if it's being recycled to be used as drinking water in a later stage. All right. Make sure that you understand this information. Uh, go back and look at some of the questions that have been asked here um, in your system and identify any questions that you may have for me. Uh, you should now be able to describe different types of wastewater explain the processes of wastewater treatment, including primary and secondary treatment, and identify and explain the laws that are in place to regulate waste materials.